Hi guys, it's Trevor here from astrobackyard.com and I wanted to shoot this quick astrophotography image processing tutorial using Adobe Camera Raw and Photoshop. So first off, I'm here in Adobe Bridge looking at some images I took of the Milky Way from a star party actually back in 2014 known as the Cherry Springs Star Party in Pennsylvania. And these are the darkest skies uh, I've ever been under, some of them anyway. And uh, unfortunately, I only took uh, a number of um, shots using my DSLR on a tripod. I was very busy uh, taking shots through my telescope, some deep sky images. Uh, I think I have my setup here, if you can kind of see it. This is my uh, 8 inch reflector on my HEQ5 mount. Some of the huge telescopes that were here. Star parties are a lot of fun uh, if you ever get a chance. Specifically uh, if, if you do go to the Cherry Springs star party this year in June you'll see me there. Anyways, let's get back to this uh, image processing tutorial. So the images I'm interested in are uh, these three here of the uh, Milky Way rising and uh, I'm just going to open up the first one in Photoshop by double-clicking it, which will by default open up Adobe Camera Raw. Now these shots were captured using uh, Canon EOS 7D, as you can see right here. And the lens I was using was uh, an 18 to 200 millimeter zoom lens from Canon. At uh, This was shot at f3.5. So the first thing I'm going to do here in Adobe Camera Raw is uh, look in the lens corrections tab here and I'm gonna click on remove chromatic aberration which is the color fringing on the edges of the stars and then I'm also gonna enable profile corrections now this is gonna read the data from the image frame and tell me which lens I actually used and here it is here the Canon EFS 18 to 200 millimeter f3.5 so if you notice what it did there, when I enabled the correction, you can see the uh, spherical change in the overall image, which uh, is corrected for, for that lens. And then you can control that yourself further by controlling the distortion slider here. But uh, I'm gonna leave that at the default. And then the vignetting, sometimes you have to adjust. As you can see, the edges get darker and lighter. So this is just on a, a single noisy image frame, um, and uh, you can you can see a lot of noise in this image, but we're going to take care of that in a little bit. So now that we've got the distortion and the vignetting and the chromatic aberration sorted out, um, actually we're going to go a little further with that chromatic aberration and uh, go in for a little scarier scary sight here, zooming in on this image. Like I said, it was on a stationary tripod, so. Uh, you do see some star trailing here at this 30 second exposure. So right around the edges is where you're going to see the worst stars. And uh, see this defringe heading here? We can control the um, amount of purple halo uh, fringing on the stars here. So I, as you can see I turned it, uh, turned it up and you see that purple the fringing start to disappear. I do see a little bit of green fringing as well so we're going to turn that level up. Okay, so we've um, improved this image so far and we've only used one tab. So I'm going to go back to the basic tab here and this is this makes a huge difference to the overall image. Uh, the temperature, so the white balance was set to auto when I shot this and as you can see the sky is pretty brown, a little green here, that's some air glow, uh, but that's just due to, uh, that's the natural look of the night sky. But uh, to improve the look of this, we're going to change the temperature to a custom white balance and go a little more towards the blue side. And everyone has their own taste here. I tend to be a little bit blue and I know that's not for everybody. So I'll try to go kind of in between. As you can see, this this starts to look like a more natural view of what your your eyes would see, although it is picking up more, more detail in the Milky Way than, than you see with a naked eye. I'm going to go down the sliders now and uh, make some adjustments. So the exposure I am going to leave pretty much alone, bump it up a little bit. The contrast 
and a lot of this I'm looking at the image as I make the adjustments and um, just moving the sliders around and seeing if I've uh, improved the image or not. Um, highlights I'm going to leave alone, shadows I'm going to leave alone, whites. I am going to move up the clarity. If you see what this does, if I bump it all the way up, it has a, a selective contrast effect on the image. So I always, for a night sky image like this, I do bump it up a little bit. So we're going to leave it at 5. And then for the vibrance and saturation, um, I like to bump the vibrance up slightly and the saturation up even more. So now you can start to see some of the more the orange in the core of the Milky Way and the purple of the Lagoon Nebula and the Eagle Nebula up there. Uh, so yeah, I think I'm happy with that as for this tab. We're going to leave the curves alone. We'll do that after. Sharpening. I don't want to sharpen this image at all. Um, actually, we'll leave it at the default 20. And then the noise reduction, I'm going to use very minimally uh, just because we're going to be stacking three images together to, uh, to help with the noise. And I don't want to lose too much detail if I can help it. So it's just the overall luminance slider that we're going to adjust there. Um, so uh, the grayscale, leaving alone, split toning. The dehaze has a similar effect that uh, clarity has. And uh, you can notice uh, an improved image in the structure um, of a night sky photo by bumping this up, uh, specifically with Milky Way shots. So I'm going to bump that right up to 10. Uh, everything else we're going to leave alone. And now I'm going to go ahead and open up this image in Photoshop. And now to apply the settings to the other two images of the Milky Way, I'm going to go back into Bridge and it updates my uh, adjustments I made in ACR. And now we can see the before and after uh, the adjustments were made. So I'm going to go into right click the image and develop settings, copy settings. And then I'm going to apply all of the settings to the other raw files and don't worry you can still go back to your original raw file uh, and start all over again and that's one of the great things about shooting raw and why you should shoot all your astro photos raw and uh, so yeah I'm gonna open up these images as well in Photoshop stack them together. Now if you had more than three images, which is uh, recommended, um, you can use a script in Photoshop to load the images in and it's located here. Uh, scripts um, load files into stack and then there you would select your your raw files and you don't want to choose um, automatically align images if you do have a foreground subject like the trees in here because it's going to try to align that and not your stars. So you'd still want to manually stack the images the way we're going to do it right now. So I'm just selecting this frame, pasting it as a new layer on my original, and close it now. And then frame number three, I'm going to paste that as a new layer as well. So we can close this image. And now we have our three images combined. And as you can see, if I turn the frames off, the sky is of course moving because these were shot on a stationary tripod and the earth is spinning. So we'll start with the first frame here. I'm going to turn the opacity down to about 47%, around 50. And then using the move tool, I'm going to line up the stars and use the arrow keys on your keyboard as well. That's helpful. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, but basically you can tell if you're lined up by turning the layer on and off. You'll see this, the trees move here, but the stars are in fact lined up. And now I'm going to use the top layer here, turn it down to 50% again, and line this up with the bottom frame. So if you have a big stack, you want to keep lining it up with the original background layer rather than your, your latest frame, otherwise you'll get farther and farther off. So again, we turn it off and on, and we are 
right on top of each other. So now layer, the background is of course at 100% and we're going to change layer 1 to 66% and layer 2 to 33%. Ooh, it looks like we've got some movement here. This is half the fun of uh, inspecting your image. I'm not sure what this is here, but it's moving along in each frame. So, like I said, half the fun of stacking, you see uh, what stays in the same spot and what doesn't. I'm not quite sure. It really looks like a star, but uh, obviously it's not. It doesn't seem a satellite would be moving faster than that too. So I don't know. Okay, so now that we've got our image here, we can go ahead and either create a new adjustment layer or flatten it. Actually, while I think of it, um, there's a couple options you can do with your blurred trees here. Uh, I see a lot of people just leave the blurred trees, which is fine if you prefer that look, unless you're looking for that sharp silhouette, uh, which I kind of like. So before I flatten this, I'm just going to copy a single layer of trees from the bottom and then I'm gonna merge these layers and then paste that layer of tree on top. And I'm just gonna do that again and put uh, paste in place so I don't have to try to adjust it again. So now I can use that single frame of the stationary trees and just go through and erase the excess here. Of 56 and brush about this size. Now you can do this um, with it, the frame isolated like you see here or you can do it with the uh, background behind it. Um, and of course you can get really uh, a lot more precise than I'm doing right here. Uh, but just so this tutorial isn't uh, as long as a normal processing session for me which would normally take me hours and hours. Okay, so you get the idea there. And just so you can see the difference of the before and after of the, the tree layer from blurred to sharp. Okay, let me just make a new adjustment layer here on top. And now we can do our final processing to this image. Uh, I'm going to try out curves, although you don't want to go too far on this. Especially with a noisy image like the one we have here using only three frames. So I think we improved it slightly there, but we definitely brought forth the noise a little bit. Uh, now for the most important final processing steps for an image like this. Uh, just so it doesn't kill my computer, I'm going to make this file a little smaller and flatten it. We're going to make it to 2000 pixels. And I'm going to run some of the actions in the Astronomy Tools action set. Uh, I'm going to run Increase Star Color. And uh, I'll put a link for this action set for Photoshop in the description. And uh, we're going to use Make Star Smaller. This is probably the most important step for uh, a Milky Way image. And I'm going to run that twice. And look at what that does to the image when you make those stars smaller from let's try to get to uh, so from before doing that to after what a difference that makes so that pretty well does it here um, for this quick tutorial and uh, there's a number of other things you can do you could uh, do some selective sharpening and, and some more contrast boost here but um, yeah, you can really get carried away, but uh, I, I really do like the, the look of this, and uh, it's quite a natural look. I'm just uh, toying around here with uh, adding a, a color uh, cooling filter on top to get closer to that blue look that I like. So I've got this cooling filter here at 15%, and uh, I think I kind of like the way that looks. It's a little less natural, but... Um, looks very cool to me. So here's my final image for now and you can do some 
um, noise reduction as well. Um, but uh, for the sake of this tutorial for uh, Adobe Camera Raw, I think you get the idea. So this is how I process a Milky Way image on uh, using a, just a stationary DSLR on a tripod. And uh, with the spring coming up, I hope you uh, hope you get a chance to get under the Milky Way and, and spend some time observing and uh, photographing it. And uh, for more tutorials and uh, imaging tips, you can either go to my website, astrobackyard.com, or subscribe to this YouTube channel. Um, I live and breathe astrophotography, and uh, I'd love for you to come on this journey with me. So thanks for watching.